My guest on the show today is Sarah Spencer, and we're going to talk about songwriting tips for beginners. And Sarah is the perfect person to come on the show and talk about this because she is a singer-songwriter. She writes songs. She's also an online educator that has courses about songwriting, and she's the founder of the blog Song Fancy, which has tons, I, I literally tons of blog posts about getting started in songwriting. And so we're going to break it all down today, talk about Sarah's story, how she got started in music, and what she's doing now to encourage and teach other songwriters. We're going to go over the tips for how you can get started, especially if you're a songwriter who may not also be a musician or play an instrument. So Sarah, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, thank you for having me. This is exciting. So you are a Nashville songwriter. Actually, you split your time, right, between Nashville and Florida? Um, kind of not yet. We are here, you know, in Nashville, just outside of Nashville. So we're here right now for the long haul. I'm from Florida originally. So gotcha. like my, yeah, my husband and I both, we both really, really have it like on our hearts and Eventually, one day we'll have a home in Florida as well. Ideally, we'll have two homes. We'll be able to go back and forth. And that's but, awesome. Yeah. So you grew up there, and now you're in Nashville doing music, mm. and you have been doing this for a long time. But I really appreciate things that you write about. I mean, you're you're an amazing blogger as well. Thank but you write you. songs, and then you talk to people about writing songs. And so you do a really good job breaking it down into very easy steps for someone who's maybe just getting started or just thinking about starting to write songs, starting to play guitar, starting to figure out this whole music thing, maybe as a hobby or a side thing, or if they want to be a professional at some point, like you, you've all got to start at zero, right? And so you do a really good job, like taking people through every step of this through your blog. And I love what you're doing with your music as well. You have a beautiful voice and I love your original song. So tell me, you talked about like growing up in Florida. Tell me what sparked that music bug for you like what got you started in songwriting personally there wasn't there was never like a big aha moment or anything like that my dad is a musician um and he's always you know had a guitar in his hand he's always been in bands um and he started building a home studio when I was probably like in middle school um and so as he was building it he taught me how to use it and that was just like we were off to the races at that point I was like oh you mean I can be here alone in my little creative bubble and play piano and record it and sing and so I started doing a lot of that and then from there I, I kind of never stopped um but yeah my dad is a musician there's a ton of musicians on my mom's side of the family all my cousins pretty much all of them are musical in some regard um yeah we're we're pretty creative people overall so it was never anything that we weren't like like I wasn't the one musician out of like a whole bunch of like you know, mathematicians and scientists or anything like that. So. I think the thing about growing up in a family that is musical is it seems so normal. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, of course we break out into song and break out into three-part harmony. And of course everyone <laughs> plays an instrument. But I realized growing up in a family like that with like lots of siblings and lots of music around that that's not normal. That we're actually, you know, pretty weird. And I think it's, it's so like such a blessing to be around that because you're hearing it, you're learning harmonies by ear, you're picking up instruments. And like, I think cultivating that uh, is really good when you're young because you can pick it up and when you have more time to practice and it's easier to learn something when you're younger I think and so the younger the better of course you're never too old to start I do want to caveat that but there's just something to you know be around it from the beginning from your whole life you know so your dad being a musician probably was your first inspiration which is really cool yeah he definitely was the inspiration too for getting me like behind a computer and writing these things down and making them more permanent rather than just like me and my journal writing in markers <laughs> little, little colorful you know poem lyric poems and stuff like that he helped me make it more permanent yeah so did you start writing songs as poems first before really putting them to a melody I mean I think my my transition was mostly oh, <laughs> okay so I had been taking piano like since I was like six years old, my parents put me in piano lessons. Thank God they did. And they also kept me in piano lessons because my butt did not like to practice. I hated practicing. I still don't love it, but like I'm a better relationship with practice now. <laughs> but um, when I was a kid, like I got to this point where I was just kind of over it. And my piano teacher too, bless her heart, she recognized that too. And 
I just, I started writing instead of practicing. <laughs> so I started writing my own songs and um, they, you know, my parents, my piano teacher saw that they encouraged it and allowed me to play like my teacher allowed me to play like original compositions at recitals instead of, you know, things that I'd learned. I think she knew early on too. She was like, she's, I don't think Sarah's going to be like a classical pianist, you know, like, I think we should just <laughs> encourage the writing thing. I think that's her wheelhouse. Um, and then from there, at some point I had also been like writing stories, um, just like books, you know, like uh -huh. stories, short stories and stuff like that. And eventually at some point they came together and I started writing quote unquote pop music, <laughs> which was just <laughs> really bad music from like the mind of a 12 year old. But um, yeah, at some point they cross pollinated and then the, the home studio was involved and I was able to start recording them and then just that's it. I never, never looked back. Yeah. So was music always like your hobby and what you would do in your free time? Like, did you have other things you thought, oh, I might try this. I might do sports. I might do this. I might, or was it just music and you had your blinders on? Like, it's going to be music something. It was kind of like, like, I, I think I did a lot of things as a kid. Like I, I was in Girl Scouts and my parents, you know, put me in a lot of different, a variety of extracurriculars and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I swam. Um, but songwriting was like always a thing I wanted to do. Like I always gotcha. wanted to make music. I found, and this is advice that I try to pass on to other young writers who might, might be that young teenager or college student, even like when, what do you find yourself being distracted by that you want to go do? Like when you procrastinate, <laughs> what do you procrastinate by doing? Cause that was definitely me. Like if I had a test I had to study for or something like that, something I did not want to do, like. I would just sneak upstairs and go write music <laughs> instead because yeah. that's definitely what I wanted to do. <laughs> that's such a good sign though to know what is your happy place. Like what is it that you would do without anyone making you, without any deadlines? What would you do instead of anything else? That's a good sign that it's probably, you know, coming from inside you and it's that creativity that's just trying to get out in whatever form, whether it's a song or writing poems. Um, I think a lot of people write lyrics and this has been a struggle I've seen in, in our community too. Maybe people that write lyrics but don't know how to put them to a melody or they have a melody idea but they don't play an instrument to put guitar chords or piano to. So what would be your advice to someone who is maybe writing poetry right now or just writing lyrics? What would be the next step for them to complete it into a song? Yeah, I mean, to complete to complete your lyrics into a song, if you're sort of dabbling in lyric writing and maybe you're writing a lot of ideas down, but they haven't fully formed into like a full set of lyrics yet, I would start there. If you're really feeling called to lyric writing and you feel like that's what's naturally coming out and maybe you don't have the burning desire to go learn an instrument from scratch right now, you always can, but if, if that's not pulling at your heartstrings right away, focus on those lyrics. Give that 100% of your focus. Like read people like Pat Pattison, come to Song Fancy. We have plenty of articles. I think the majority of Song Fancy community uh, readers are lyricists. We have a lot of folks that are recording instrumentally, like instrumentalist focused. And then we have a large, I think the majority of people are lyrics focused. Um, Learn, I guess my biggest tip for starting off between moving between poetry and lyrics, but from poetry into lyrics, would be to study the music that you really love and the music that you want to write. Um, so for me back in the early days, that was like, you know, pop music. That's all I listened to as a kid. So pop music was, and then it turned into like rock music, whatever it is that you're listening to and you want to write yourself, take those songs and kind of take them apart. Um, lyrics are all online these days. so. Google your favorite song, pull up the lyrics, take a look at it. Like you can even mm -hmm. put physical distance in between. What does it look like? The, what is the structure and the format? How are things outlined? Get close up and then look line by line and start to take it apart. Um, it's interesting to see how songs are made when you're that close to them because you kind of notice things that would fly by otherwise when you're just listening. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of early writing is a lot of emulation. You're kind of parroting what you hear. And that's fine. Like, that's totally fine. How would you know what the possibilities are until you start to explore and see what other people are doing? Um, 
So yeah, start looking at songs that you love, pick them apart. How many syllables are in this line? What are, what's the rhyme scheme? What words rhyme? What words don't? What artists choose to have rhymes and what artists choose to not rhyme things? Um, and just see where it leads and don't don't be afraid to emulate. I'm, I'm not saying plagiarize or copy, but definitely don't, don't feel uh, afraid to emulate what you hear because you find it interesting. Over time, you will find what is original for you. Yes, make it your own. And I was just thinking about uh, the scripture verse the other day, there's nothing new under the sun. Mm -hmm. Everything, everything is out there, but we as creative people can make a new version or a new combination of things, which is so neat because you can blend different styles and make it something totally new that nobody's done before. And so I think as creative people, having that visual of literally looking at the lyrics is so helpful because you see the patterns instead of just hearing it. I think, you know, if you are creative, maybe you are a visual learner. And so if you see the lyrics and you see, oh, they rhyme it with this word and it kind of, there's an internal rhyme here that you might not even catch if you're listening, but if you see it in writing or you see it typed out, those things kind of jump off the page. Yeah, definitely. Well, tell me about getting started with your blog. Did you start getting questions from people? And so you started writing blogs or was that something that was like a passion project where you thought, I just want to put the information out there and help other people that are getting started. What was that first inspiration for starting Song Fancy? Yeah, it evolved over time. Um, my beginnings of Song Fancy were not that noble or service-based, honestly. Like, <laughs> I just, I wanted to try the blogging thing. Um, I thought I'd start like a lifestyle blog, like living in Nashville, talking about my life. <laughs> I started it in like 2014. So I'd only been in town for two years. I didn't really have much to <laughs> pass along at that point. Um, but I started, I'm, I'm a graphic designer by trade. I went to school for graphic design. I've been working on websites just as almost as long as I've been writing songs. So it was an interesting creative outlet. And mm -hmm. I also saw it as a way that I could potentially make some income, side income. For sure. So I'm going to try it. Let's see what happens. Um, and so I started it and I started just kind of telling stories about what I was doing in town. Um, other advice that I was hearing that was like blowing my mind. Um, there's, I've removed a lot of that from Song Fancy because it was just kind of embarrassing, kind of cringy, just like, mm, we've, we've moved on since then. But um, there's one article in particular that is still up and I think it's called, like, it's a really complex title. It's like the verses are for you, the chorus is for everyone else. Um, mm, that's good. It, it's an interesting read. I heard um, Georgia Middleman say that on stage and one night when we went to go see her play and um, that really stuck with me. So yeah, talk about, I mean, talk about some of the best advice I've ever gotten. I was like, oh, okay, there it is. Um, so that yeah, article I think is- As songwriters, it's good to like find that one little nugget, like that one sentence that we can just like think about and remind ourselves, kind of like a mantra of remembering when you are in the writing process and you can say, all right, you know what? The chorus needs to be understandable for everyone else, but I'm going to be more specific in the verses and make it my own and share my story. Um, so I think that one quote just rings true. When you hear it, you're like, yes, that's so true. It's almost like a hook. It's like the mm -hmm. one thing that ties up. Oh, okay, cool. You can write it on your wall. You can put it on a t-shirt like they say, but yeah. yeah. What, was there a moment that was like, um, uh, an aha moment for changing or getting more specific in your direction? Like how did you niche down to where you're at now? Was that kind of a slow gradual thing of just seeing what was working, see what people were interested in, and then you did more of that? Yeah, that's a really good question. There was, it, it was definitely a slow gradual thing. And I'm trying to think of people that I can credit with where I got the idea to move into teaching. Um, Cause I was listening to a lot of podcasts from like a lot of entrepreneurs, like, um, yeah. I think Pat Flynn was somebody I was listening to a lot back then. Mm -hmm. um, I love Jenna Kutcher. She's amazing. But, Same. Yeah. Uh, Listen to her podcast a lot. I love the business side of things and, and education, online education, especially. And that world is just blowing up. Like literally you can go out and take a course from people that are doing any specific topic that you want to study and learn from them. And I think it speeds up the process so much. And so you can literally go out to Pinterest or go out to YouTube and look up a tutorial for anything you want to learn. And so that just opens up the possibilities for people in a way that has never been possible before. 
Yes. Especially now where people are like, what do I do? What do I do with my hands? I have so much free time. Yeah. Especially, you know, going through a pandemic and being at home a lot and the last few months have been a huge shift in using video more, connecting more online, doing everything virtually. Um, and so I don't think that element of things is going away. So I do want to mention that for anyone that's maybe not started making videos or not started putting things out on YouTube or on Pinterest, or if you're a writer, maybe starting a blog, like now is not too late for okay. anyone to get started, especially if you're wanting to write or make music. There's so much room for good music out there. Amen. Nail on the head right there. <laughs> So tell me what your direction is moving forward. I know you're teaching courses now about songwriting and you've got an online community. So how can people get connected with what you're doing? Yeah. Oh my gosh. There's so many points of entry. Okay. Song Fancy, the blog. <laughs> Come on down. We have a lot of free articles there. Well, all the articles are free. It's long form, a lot of really good stuff. I try and just like put a ton of information into every article. Um, we have a ton of resources for lyric writers. Um, specifically. Um, after that, if you want to jump into writing some songs, and lyric writers are invited, as well as, you know, people who write music and lyrics, um, come join the five and five song challenge. This is a free songwriting challenge that I host a couple times a year. It's like every couple months. We're due for another one. I haven't announced the date yet, but maybe September. Um, Which would be perfect for when this podcast is coming out. So oh, perfect. <laughs> I love it. If our listeners want to jump in on that one, then perfect timing. Yes. And if you join, like when you introduce yourself in the group, tell us that you came from Rustic Songbird. Like, I want to know. Perfect. Um, yeah, it's a free songwriting challenge. It's sort of a kick in the booty, like five day. We write five songs in five days. It is a, definitely a professional pace. Um, so if you are interested in making writing your career, come join us. If you are in a, like a slump and you are very blocked or just feeling down on yourself come join us there's a lot of amazing people in the group that are i mean this this group is so uplifting and i don't do any of that like i i can't control what people say like they're just kind they listen to each other's songs they offer feedback um and we just kind of lift each other up and it's a really really wonderful community especially if you've never shared a song before there are a lot of people in the group that are sort of first time, like I've never done this before. We had a girl last challenge um, who, I think her name was Sheila. She doesn't play an instrument. She's a lyrics writer, but she'd been like a, like a closet lyric writer, you know? And so she, she's so cute. I love her so much for this. She like put her phone up in her bathroom and she's a singer. So she puts her phone up in her bathroom and she's got her notebook and she's just singing her lyrics like in her bathroom and I, I was like I'm so proud of you for that's a huge step if you've never shared your music before to go on camera here's my voice here's my message she crushed it so more than welcome to come join and then um last but not least I'm launching a new membership community I don't have the launch date yet um, and that is going to be a paid community where we sort of continue the structure, sort of like the five and five. Um, but this community is called Song Club, and it's a place where you can come and meet co-writers. And we do um, scheduled writing events where we all meet up in our homes or independent places, and we are all working on our same material at the same time. I'm also going to have a ton of exercises that you can do every day if you'd like. Um, to really grow. So the five and five is all about pushing yourself to see where your limits can be stretched to. And then song club is about growth and maintaining and just keeping that joy alive for songwriting. It's a little bit of a rant. I, I get excited. I love that. Yeah. There's so many great things to get involved in at different levels too. If someone's just getting started, like there's little bite-sized things you can do to get started, take it at your own pace. But then also I think there's so much value and it's so special to have a community of people that get it, people that understand what the writing process is like and they can give you feedback, but it's not like just sharing on Facebook to random friends and family that aren't musical yeah. or, you know, just people that don't know the industry or, you know, how things are supposed to work. I think having a community that is specifically for songwriting is that encouraging, like safe place yes. where you can make your first video or you can post your lyrics and get feedback and just know that it's going to be an encouraging community and you're not going to get 
a bunch of negative comments or, you know, crickets. Crickets are even worse sometimes because you're like, was that good or not? I don't know. And I have heard that from a lot of writers is, I don't know if this is good. I haven't shared it. So having somewhere to share it and get some feedback, you can say, well, you know what? Three people in the songwriting Facebook group said it was good. So it must be good. And so, like you said, even just taking that next step, whatever it is, if it's making your first video, sharing your song, that's going to give you more confidence to do more videos and to write more songs. And it just snowballs from there. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love that you're doing the five and five challenge because I do think it's good to kind of have a sprint and really push yourself and see what you can do, see what you're made of. And a lot of times people will start something and then kind of spiral out or like burn out pretty quickly. Yeah. And so to have something where you're you're getting accountability to show up for five days in a row. If you can do that, you can keep going as a writer. And so I think that's a great way to get started and just you know have that challenge to really push yourself as a writer and you'll just get better and better over time. I really okay. believe that. Absolutely. What encouragement would you give to songwriters who are listening, who are wanting to get started, especially lyric writers? I think that's a good focus for today because I have heard a lot of people say, I write lyrics, but I may not play an instrument or I, I write lyrics, but you know, I don't know how to finish the song. And so there's, uh, there's people that are listening that want to get started. And I'm sure checking out a lot of your blogs is a good way to get started because you've talked about those topics before, but just as we're wrapping up today, what encouragement would you give somebody who's maybe just feeling discouraged or maybe uh, feeling like there's a lot of options out there and they're not sure where to start? Oh yeah. I have like just so much, I just say empathy feels like such a buzzword these days, but like my heart goes out to people who are in that position. Like I'm just beginning, like, what do I do? Um, if you are career minded, if you want to make music for a living, if you want to be a full-time musician or you want to move to a place like Nashville or LA or whatever, and write songs for a living, even if you don't want to be an artist, maybe you just want to be a songwriter. Um, I would really encourage you to obviously write, but beyond that, know who you are and know why writing brings you joy and don't ever let anybody take that away from you. Um, it sounds a little bit simple, but it's so easy to try to just write to other people's expectations, especially if you're career minded, because you have to, I mean, there is a give and take, like we should all write music because we want to, and we love it. And we have a message that we want to get out, but we also you know, have to keep the listener in mind. And if we expect anybody to get involved with our music and actually listen to it, which we all for the most part want people to listen to our music, we have to have the end listener in mind. Um, when you go into a songwriting career, you're going to kind of have to fit a lot of boxes. And I just want people to be aware of that now because if you don't know that that's coming, it can be really, really easy to just get your spirit crushed really fast. So know what it is about music that brings you joy. Hold on to that joy. Keep it fun. Not every song that you ever write has to be a hit. I mean, like, no, nobody, like, even has to like your music. Like, you can write songs that no one likes. That's okay. You can write terrible songs that you don't even like. That's okay. Um, you're going to, honestly, we all do. We all write songs that are just like, eh, it didn't really hit the mark. I think allowing to, allowing yourself to have a little bit of separation between you as a person and the work that you create will help keep it fun. Um, and to know, to know who you're writing for, that's kind of what I've been talking about a lot recently. I feel like I'm talking about it on the blog and in my Facebook group and stuff. It's like, no, know who you're writing for. Are you writing for yourself in this moment because you have something that you have to process and it's on your heart and it's important for you to get it out? Write it. And you never know what will happen with that song. Maybe it just goes in your, your journal and you never see it again, but you learned a lot from it. Or maybe it goes on to be recorded and become a number one song. You never know. Um, or are you writing for your career? Are you writing for a an artist, a specific artist, um, keep that in mind. It will help put a little bit of separation between your heart <laughs> and your work. Yes. <laughs> if that makes sense. But yeah, hold on to that joy and never let anybody take it from you. 
I think it's so good to enjoy the process and enjoy mm -hmm. being creative and writing and just know like you can write this song and then you can write another song and then you can write a bunch of songs like one at a time like different thoughts of course you're going to have more thoughts you're going to have more song ideas and so not thinking oh this one has to be perfect because it doesn't it's like no it has to be an expression and so sometimes that can be raw and can be a beautiful thing in itself um, and there's a lot that you can do in songwriting that's just therapeutic it might be a song that's just for you and then the next song you write might be for someone else and you never know who it's going to touch and so i think it's uh, such a gift to be able to express our thoughts and our ideas through music oh, yeah. and to encourage other people inspire people and you know that might become someone's favorite song down the line and so we yeah. never know so we can't hold ourselves back and wait till it's perfect to put it out there absolutely well said well, Sarah, tell us how people can find you online, on social media, follow what you're doing, and hear some of your music. Yeah, you can find me on Instagram at Sarah Spencer Music. You can find me on Facebook at slash Sarah Spencer Music. My website is sarahspencer.com. <laughs> yes, and the blog is songfancy.com. Songfancy.com. Um, I feel like I have all these different URLs. They're all different it's okay. <laughs> Songfancy.com for songwriting tips. Yes, you're doing some amazing things. So thank you for giving back to the musicians and for helping other writers get started. Of course, we're passionate about that at Rustic Songbird. So I want to let everybody know what you're doing so they can join in the five and five challenge and see what you're up to and, you know, just learn from the blogs and from more people that are doing this. So thank you for all that you're doing and putting out into the world. It's really beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you for letting me come onto your podcast and talk about this stuff. I could talk about songwriting forever. So I've loved talking with you today about it. And I love that you are coming from that place of encouragement because I feel like I, I align with that too. So thank you. That's awesome. I appreciate you being on the show. If you enjoy this podcast, I want to invite you to become a patron and join our community on Patreon for Rustic Songbird. You can check out all of the details by going to patreon.com slash rustic songbird to support this show and be a part of our Patreon community. Thanks for watching the behind the scenes of this episode of the Rustic Songbird podcast. You can check out all of the previous podcasts by going to rusticsongbird.com slash podcast for interviews with people in the music industry to encourage you and inspire you to take that next step in your music career. I appreciate you watching this video and I want to invite you to subscribe to this channel for even more videos like this coming soon. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button and hit the bell to be notified every time we have a new video. All right, catch you next time.